I, you've developed a, an actual meditative practice or like a mm-hmm. visualization um, yes. around everything that you just said. And it's quite beautifully done. I've, I've heard you do it. Um, you know, whatever it's the Ted talk or whatever videos you've done. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, which maybe I'll come back to this later, but we've actually incorporated the ACE model and psychological flexibility yes. and the ACE body scan into yes. our protocols at, yes. at Numinous. So it's incredibly exciting. Um, and I'll hope to get a chance to tell you a story about a mm. recent experience I had guiding a client yeah. w- with the ACE body scan, which is actually totally incredible. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> that makes me so happy. I can't wait to hear. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm excited to share it with you. Would you be up for guiding me and the listeners through a brief, like maybe yeah. max five minute ACE body yes. scan? Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Yes. Okay. I'll turn it over to you. Okay. So, so imagine that you are on a beach and the waves are just laughing at your feet and it's very cool and relaxing. And then you're going to pick up some diving equipment that's lying there by your side. And you're going to walk to the surface of the water, the edge of the water where the water meets the beach, and you see a boat on the horizon. And the boat's coming towards the the beach where you are, and it's going to come and take you on a diving adventure. So you pick up the the diving gear, and the boat comes right up to the beach, and you climb aboard, and then it sails back out to the center of the sea. And you sit there, and you're sitting on a chair at the top of the boat, and it's a chair that's especially for you, and it's You can feel the sun on your face and you just feel that sun there on your forehead and on your cheeks and on the back of your neck. Just let that sun just kind of absorb into you for a moment. And then the the ship goes right out to the center and it's going to be time for a dive. So you climb down the ladder on the side of the boat And when you choose to dive down, you know that you're making a conscious decision to, for a moment, dive down from your mind into your body for a little while. So you're on the the edge, you're on the, the, uh, the ladder, and then with your diving equipment on, you dive down beneath the surface of the waves. And then you feel that sense of being held by the water it's the warm water all around you and you dive down. And as you dive, just do a body scan. So as you're diving down, you imagine that your, your hands are, are diving down and just bring your awareness down through your body as you dive. So just bring your awareness to your the tips of your fingers surging down as you dive. And then as you surge down through the water, just bringing your awareness up through your hands and through your wrists your arms, and then over your head, your forehead that's diving down, and then your cheeks, space behind your eyes, your neck, and then down through your torso, bring awareness to your heart, and your lungs, and your belly, and then all the way down your torso, your hips, your thighs, your legs kicking as you dive down, and your knees, and your calves, your heels, and then the very tips of your toes. And then as you've done that, you can do that again in your own time now, just really doing a body scan from the very, very, from your tips of your fingers down to the tips of your toes. And as you do it, just breathe gently and just bring awareness to any part of your body where you feel any kind of tension or any kind of, uh, yeah, just any sensations going on in your body, just just really breathe into them and and let yourself feel them. So take a a few moments just to really scan down from the tips of your fingers to to the little points of your toes. And then what we're going to do is imagine that as you're swimming down, you get to the very bottom of the sea. And at the very, very lowest level of the sea, there's silt and sand and mud, and it's quite murky. And there are some oyster shells. 
And we're just gonna go into one oyster shell now. And the oyster shell is going to be something that is difficult that you feel in your body somewhere. So any tension that you felt could be a tightness in your chest. It could be any sensation, anything that you felt going on there. Just imagine that that is an oyster tightly clasped at the bottom of the water, at the bottom of the ocean. And you're gonna swim up to it and you're gonna open the shell and you're gonna open that feeling up in yourself, which means really allowing yourself to feel it. So breathe into that feeling, wherever you feel it in your body, as you open up this oyster shell and breathe into that place. And you're gonna make that feeling a little bit bigger. So really allow it to be just as it is. Don't try and make it better or fix it. Just really breathe into that feeling and open it up and stay with it for a while. And as you let it grow, just have a little moment now of, of silence from me where you're just imagining that you're searching that oyster for a pearl, some kind of insight, some kind of meaning about what this feeling in your body is actually trying to tell you. What is the message that this feeling gives your body? It doesn't have to be a great big insight, just what is your body nodding to you and saying in this moment? So just stay with that feeling and I'll, I'm gonna leave you a minute to just really feel into it. And then I'll let you know when the minute is up and you can swim up to the surface of the sea with any pearls that you might have found. So you've got one minute from now to just really feel into that sensation and open up to it. And so now just imagine that you're putting that shell back down on the ocean floor. And if there's a pearl, that's great, but it's okay if there isn't. And you're going to swim up to the surface. So swim, kicking your legs as hard as you can, like really, really going for it. And imagine that you're surging up through the dark water to the place where the water becomes bluer and lighter and brighter. And you can feel the sun at the surface of the water. And then you burst through the top and then you're just there with the sun on your face and the boat's right there to meet you and you climb up the ladder and then you're sitting there on top of the boat with a blanket around you in the sun, beautiful pink sky. And if you found a pearl, you can look down at that pearl and just remember a few things about what that pearl spoke to you of, about the sensations in your body. And then whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. Do I have to? <laughs> well, you can stay swimming around. I like <laughs> to stay there. <laughs> Thank you, Roz. Oh, pleasure. It's been a while since I um it's, it's been a while since I yeah, went back to that that one. So I don't know if I remembered all the parts right, but yeah, that's the general impression. What do you normally ask people as they're coming out of a practice like that? So, Feel free to use me as a guinea pig if that's going to be helpful. Yeah, you, don't, you don't have to, yeah. but just it's, no, it's available absolutely. if you want it. Yeah, I was. Were you able to kind of engage with it? Did you feel like you could go go there? I mean, obviously, it's, it was a short one. Did you feel that you could engage? Very with it? much, very oh. much. And um, I mean, I I do have a meditation practice, so this kind of thing is is um, <clears throat> sort of just a regular thing, mm -hmm. but um, also just you know, a little bit of nervousness and just being very alert with this interview and stuff. So I feel, you know, quite activated, um, just kind of alive and alert. So that yeah. might have contributed to, you know, just having an experience, I guess. Mm. Could you say a few words about it? If it's not too sure. exposing. 
Yeah, no, I'm happy to. So, so I found the, um, the visualization, like it took me a second to sort of click in. I didn't know if I should like lie back or close my eyes, but I, I sort of like landed and the visualization just like popped in pretty clear. Um, um, I'm taking a sun vacation in about a month. So, so that whole thing's a little bit on my mind. Um, but yeah, just the, the beach and, and the water and yeah, it just sort of felt familiar, felt, felt relatively vivid. Um, this piece about the chair on the boat, just for me felt really nice, felt really supportive. Um, and then, yeah, the, I guess the piece about, um, that transition from having a, you know, a bit of a cognitive, cognitive visualization and then transitioning to sort of directing attention to the body felt very clear. And I have a lot of things happening in my body right now, just speaking to what I said earlier about being a little activated. And then, um, there was a little bit of, um, sort of running like which of these, sort of yes. sensations or groups or patterns of sensations are going to kind of like come to the fore as the one that I um, sort of connect to, I guess. Mm. And I landed on one and it just sort of amplified and, and it had this sort of like warmth kind of like emanating mm. out from my, I don't know, lower chest, upper belly kind of thing. And, you know, definitely some emotion came with it and, kind of smile came over my face and um, yeah. And then kind of coming back up, I, I, I had the sense of like kind of surging up and then like mm -hmm. coming out into the, into the sunlight and it was quite nice and um, something welcoming about the, the boat yeah. and the sunset or, you know, I think you mentioned like a pink yeah. sky. So yeah, very, it was very vivid. Aww. I don't know if that, um, uh, answers your question or maybe over answers your question no, or something. it's lovely I'm so glad it's 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 beautiful when people are able I mean I, I'm actually really bad at visualization myself I find it really hard uh -huh. to get into it so it's amazing when people because that was so quick and you were you were able to switch from you know doing a podcast interview to that place of really seeing so clearly so quickly so yeah I'm I'm in awe it's very cool when people can do that huh. cool so so you would ask people to just maybe report back what they experienced and, and then what is it just, just sort of open up from there or are there specific things you inquire into? I'm guessing, you know, you and I could do a deep dive into exactly what the emotion mm -hmm. was yes. and what the body sensations yes. were. And that becomes a great trailhead for therapy. Yes. Am yes. I getting that right? Yeah, exactly. And actually when we, so this visualization would be done a long version. It would be done in the prep session the day before psilocybin. Right. So, right. Um, so we're asking people to imagine, like imagine that tomorrow you're going to be going on this journey when you take the psilocybin. So it's like, you're already introducing a little bit of like anticipatory anxiety to people as well. And sometimes excitement. So you're doing it with them on the bed that they're going to be having psilocybin on the next day with the headphones on, although slightly to the side and the eye shades and the music playing. So it's kind of like a practice run for the actual psilocybin deep dive. And they have two therapists either side holding their hands if they want to. So we're really running through. So the, the purpose of the visualization is partly for them to gain a language for sensations, but also crucially to communicate them with their therapist because one of the things I found in the first study is that people would be going through all sorts of stuff inside and sometimes really want to connect with the the guide the person next to them and tell them about what was going on to help them kind of move through it but they didn't know how to reach out or ask for help or get support because they felt so far away and they just didn't know how to so by doing this visualization the day before we were kind of practicing how it feels to have a feeling and communicate it with us. Like often in the psilocybin experience, they wouldn't need to, but just so that if they did need to, we'd practice it. So when we did the visualization, um, we would say, so, you know, can you find an oyster? And actually people would live report what was going on. So they'd say, yeah, I'm feeling a, an oyster of this. And they would talk us through what they were feeling in the moment. And so it just enabled us to have that connection with them of like, I'm here with you side by side. We, we, we can, we're connected in, in your experience so that if people wanted to connect with the guides, they could. So that was kind of the other purpose of it. Hmm. Communication. So 
you wouldn't do this during a psilocybin session? So it would be the day before then in, um, we didn't do it during the session itself, but I would really like to, I, I imagine that it would be, um, a really nice way to begin people and, and like start mm-hmm. the session off. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you quickly. I know we're unfortunately getting oh. low on time here. I'd, I could just do this for much longer, but, um, I do ketamine assisted psychotherapy yes. and, um, I'm working right now with a client who does have a hard time getting out of her head. Mm. Um, and on the second medicine session, um, she took the ketamine and we waited for it to sort of come on. And she said, I feel like I'm resisting the medicine coming on a little bit. I don't know how, I don't know what to do. And we chatted a little bit about the different options. I ended up sitting on the ground next to her and guiding her through an ACE body scan. Mm. Um, Not anywhere near as elegantly as you just did, but you know, um, you know, the, the, the key elements were there and, um, it, what was part of what was cool about it for me, which I don't normally get in a body scan that I'd be guiding in like a mindfulness based restoration mm-hmm. group or something is like, it was a bit interactive. I would ask her yeah. to tell me yes. about the sensations and we just sort of landed in this part of her chest that's normally quite tight when she feels mm-hmm. anxious. And she was describing kind of opening and, and a peacefulness there, which was quite unusual for her. And then you know, we sort of just kind of like winded it down. She put on her headphones and then just took off. Mm. And she had like a really beautiful journey. And I really felt like the, the body scan Mm. helped disarm the resistance a little bit. And, and it was like just that whole process of like Mm. having the experience of like holding tight, um, resisting and then letting go was incredibly therapeutic, but then Mm. everything that happened on the medicine was also really interesting too. So, um, pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. That's so, I, that's wonderful. Yeah. It's, it's so brilliant to hear. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. To share, share those stories. It's yeah. Lovely to hear. I hope there'll be lots more in the future where we can all, you know, this model and all the other models that are going to develop, they're going to be so many, you know, great ways of working and yeah, it'll be nice when all the people, well, they, yeah, the community is 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 developing, and it's lovely to share with. I mean, that's the whole learning of all of it. It's just how nice it is, you know, psilocybin adventures, journeys, um, or psychedelic experiences. There's a lot about the idea of the hero's journey, like the individual journey that we go on individually. But it's something about the shared journey that we, you know, you come back down from the mountain and you tell people about it, or just, you know, going through the journey together. It feels to me like that's kind of really important of of what we need right now hey thanks for checking out that clip of the mindspace podcast you can get the full episode here on youtube or check it out on your favorite podcast platform thanks and be well Mm -hmm.